This is the Ender 3 V3 made by Creality. The V3 is the newest edition of the next generation Ender 3 series 3D printers. It's offering amazing features and technology that are usually found on the top end models. With built in smart features such as the hands free auto bed level system and the auto Z offset, input shaping, the direct drive extruder, and impressive printing speeds of up to 600 mm per second. Taking a look around the printer, the new V3 has a solid cast aluminium alloy build for the base and the upright gantry. It's well built and designed with rounded corners giving it a clean modern look. On the underside all the electronics are neatly enclosed and it sits on four rubber feet. The V3 utilises a core XZ motion driven by two stepper motors and belts. There's no lead screws and instead runs on linear rods to help minimise Z banding this design also includes an automatic XZ belt tensioning system. The bed on the Y axis is also on linear rods driven with a belt on a single stepper motor. Around the printer we can find good quality cables that are neatly managed and the hotbed has a nice thick cable with built in strain relief. The tool head also has a strain relief point for the cabling with a neat cover that's clipped into place. The print volume is 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters which is enough room for small to medium sized models. On the bed we have a magnetic flexible build plate with a textured PEI print bed surface. The flexible plate makes it easy to remove 3D printed models once they cool simply by flexing it and removing the printed part. Reinstallation is easy as it has two handy alignment screws to ensure it's always put back into the correct position. The bed heats up quickly and reaches a maximum temperature of 110 degrees. The V3 also has an auto bed level system and auto Z offset. For users this is great as there's no need to turn screws or make adjustments manually. And the bed level is totally hands free and completely taken care of by the machine. The Z offset can still be manually adjusted on the touch screen if needed. The spool holder is mounted at the side of the printer and it comes with a small attachment that is an anti-tangle material rack. And this simply clips onto the spool holder. It's a spring loaded device that helps keep the filament on the spool from becoming tangled or unwound during printing. At the back we have the filament run out sensor located and this will pause prints if it detects the filament has run out. The print head contains the direct drive extruder with a locking lever for the filament and we have dual cooling fans with air ducts to cool down the freshly printed layers. The hot end has a ceramic heater for quickly heating it up and it comes with a 0.4mm hardened steel tip nozzle installed that reaches temperatures of up to 300 degrees which is good for a variety of filaments like PLA, PETG and flexible TPU. The Ender 3 V3 is running a 32-bit board with Creality's OS which is based on Clipper. This gives faster calculations translating to faster, smoother and higher quality prints. The 4.3 inch colour touchscreen is a great addition providing much better interaction with the machine and with more information being displayed. The user interface is responsive and easy to navigate on the touch screen and we can control the printer, start prints and view settings to see the print progress. For printing methods there's a USB side port for printing with a USB stick or with the built in Wi-Fi we can send prints directly from Creality Print Slicing software and we can also use Creality Cloud Printing which allows printing, control and remote monitoring. Taking a look at the unboxing, everything is well packaged and the printer comes mostly pre-assembled and is almost ready to go. In the box we have the aluminium alloy upright that has the tool head installed along with the XZ motion system. Next up we have the base which is solid and well built and made from aluminium alloy and this has the hotbed attached and all the cable in ready to go. To help you get started there's the quick installation guide for the assembly of the printer and we also have some Creality stickers included. There's the filament spool holder and the anti-tangle material rack, a piece of Teflon tube that connects from the runout sensor to the extruder, clips and a cable cover for the tool head wiring. There's a small sample of white PLA filament, enough for a few prints, an accessory box that includes the unclogging tool, a pair of cutting pliers, a tube of grease, the USB drive that contains some pre-sliced files, the user manual, slicing software and the setup video. We also have the bolts for assembly, a few cable ties and the tools including allen keys, screwdriver and a socket spanner. And finally we have the 4.3 inch colour touchscreen and a power cable. Only a few steps are needed for the assembly starting with attaching the spool holder to the side of the frame 
and this simply slots into place. Next, before installing the upright gantry, we need to check the power supply is set to the correct voltage, as the switch will be covered by the upright once installed. Now we install the upright frame to the base, and this is secured together with eight bolts, two from the front and two from the underneath for each side. The ribbon cable is plugged into the back of the screen, then this is aligned with the slots on the base and pressed into place. The Teflon tube is connected to the filament runout sensor, then into the extruder. The cables are plugged into the tool head, the filament runout sensor, and the stepper motors. The cable on the tool head is zip tied to provide strain relief, and then the cover is clipped into place. There's a small clip for the wiring just above the runout sensor that holds the cable neatly in place. And with it connected, you'll want to check the cable isn't being pulled tight when the tool head is at its furthest position. Also, don't forget to add the small clips to keep the Teflon tube and wiring neatly aligned. Now we can plug in the power cable and turn on the printer. The printer will boot up and it takes about 28 seconds to start up. On the initial power up, we set up and configure the printer and run the self-check system. This will check and test the hot end, the hotbed, all the fans, run the input shaping and set the auto bed level. With this complete, we can start our first print. For the first print, we're using Creality's Hyper Blue PLA filament. The Creality Hyper PLA is designed for high speed printing and faster cooling while retaining high precision. To load the filament, we start with preheating the nozzle, then unlock the extruder gear, place the filament on the spool holder, and attach the anti tangle material rack. Now we feed the filament into the runout sensor and all the way until it's into the extruder then re-lock the extruder lever. In the menu on the touchscreen, select Extrude, and this will purge out any old filament and ensure the currently loaded filament is all the way to the nozzle. For the first print, we'll start with a high-speed 13-minute benchy boat that's included as a pre-sliced file. It's a fast print for a benchy boat, and it's a good first test print to check and confirm the printer's working well. The finished model printed in 13 minutes and the final print wasn't perfect, but it turned out well for a super fast benchy print. For the next print we're using the included KSR FDM test. This is a standard print test developed by Autodesk and Kickstarter to test FDM printers performance. It has bridging, overhangs, tolerances, fine feature control with the needle towers, and dimension accuracy to name a few. The finished test looks good and the printer did an excellent job of the tolerances all the way from 0.6 to 0.2 millimeters. The overhangs and fine feature control also turned out well. To test out more prints, we'll slice them with the included software. The Creality Print software is easy to use, and from here we can prepare and slice 3D models for printing. There's default presets for slicing files, which I find work well, and these can be easily customised and adjusted by editing the profiles. Once we have a model sliced as a G-code file, it can be sent directly to the Ender 3 V3 over Wi-Fi or saved onto a USB drive. The file is then stored on the 3D printer's memory. It's good using Wi-Fi and a lot quicker than having to move files from a PC to a printer with an SD card or USB drive. Within the software, we can control and monitor the one machine or multiple 3D printers. And it makes it easy to send jobs, adjust settings and watch over the printer. Prints can also be monitored from the Creality Cloud app or from a mobile device. The next print is of a fighter jet with wings that move. This is printed in red hyper PLA filament at a 0.2 mm layer height. The finished result turned out well, and the print tolerances look good, allowing the wings to open on the model.
The next print of a geometric pot is printed using the spiral mode which starts with a few base layers and then prints one 0.4mm wall around the edges to create the model. The PEI plate holds the model well when printing and allows the printed model to be easily removed as it starts to cool. The final print turned out great and the printer performed as expected. A super clean print with a nice smooth surface finish. After using the Ender 3 V3, I found it to meet expectations with its speed and print quality. It's an excellent printer that's easy to set up and allows you to get started printing quickly. Overall, I'm impressed with the latest V3 edition's usability, build quality, prints produced and the print speed. The Ender 3s have been an extremely popular range of 3D printers and the V3 continues to offer good value. It makes a great 3D printer either for new users or if you're looking to upgrade from an older machine.